Well, good afternoon, everybody. You are welcome to TEDx Union Learning. Um, well, our main theme is roots. But I have carefully chosen for myself this topic, the paradox of Africa, disconjoined from the roots. The paradox of Africa, disconjoined from the roots. There we have four major keywords. And I say arguably, the first one is Africa. Africa, we are in Africa. And that's the black continent, the second largest continent we have in the world. Then the paradox is a true self-contradictory statement. Disconjoined simply means, as is used here, disconnected. Then roots. Now, I want to distinguish between roots, singular, and roots, plural. Ordinarily, roots here, the singular form, refers to the underground base of a plant. And that is the part of the plant that anchors the plant, that holds the plant, absorbing water, supplying it with the food, the nutrients from the soil. Then contextually, roots with the plural now, speaks of somebody's genetic, cultural, or family origins or ancestry, especially as the basis for a feeling of belongingness or a deep sense of nostalgia, especially if you are disconnected from that root. Well, many of us will have heard some very ugly things about Africa, being said about Africa by non-Africans. These are two guys that you and I must have read on social media who had said very ugly things about Africa. Let's quickly consider some of them. Well, it's unfortunate that Africa today is disdained and disparaged among the community of nations, or the community of continents, rather. Now, the social media is replete with several unfounded claims, I said, claims, making round that heads of states, such as U.S. former President Donald Trump and his North Korean counterpart, King John Hong have added, allegedly expressed deep disgust for Africans by referring to them as lazy fools. And these two guys have been, they have been alleged to have said Africans are only good in two things. That Africans are only good as consumers and that we are only good in bed. I don't know how they came up, uh, uh, about that, whether they tested it, I wouldn't know. Now, both of them has, have also been alleged to have recommended that the solution for Africa is that Africans need to be colonized for another 100 years so that we can learn our lessons. Now, if those claims, like we said, were unfounded, mere claims, let's look at this one. Back in the 18th, in the 19th century, there had been messages or words like that too. One of them, in his book, Philosophy of History, Hegel had said this about Africa. He said, Africa is not a historical continent because it shows neither change nor development, and that its Negro people were capable of neither development nor education. He said, as you see them today, so they have always been, that you and I can never change. Professor H. Trevor Ropa, also he echoed the same thing in the 19th century when he said, perhaps in the future there will be some African history to teach. He said, but as at present, there is none. He said, there is only the history of the Europeans in Africa. The rest is darkness, and darkness is not a subject of history. The general belief now is that, or was that Africans were held to be capable of receiving foreign influences without contributing anything meaningful to the development of the world. Now, what a fallacy that is. What a fallacy that is. Especially when we consider legacies of the African glorious past. Ancient Egypt, it's generally accepted that ancient Egypt remains the cradle of man and the cradle of civilization anywhere in the world. And uh, ancient Egypt is a trailblazer in virtually all known disciplines. In medicine, my brother was talking about medicine, 
In Mesin, ancient Egypt trailed the uh, blaze in many areas. For instance, the pathological department, that's in the, where they embalmed the dead. The first, way, the, the first place where that was done was in ancient Egypt with the Egyptian mummification. Then in architecture with the pyramids of Egypt, in agriculture, Fadama farming, the irrigation system we have today, in water resources, library science, talk of any discipline in arts, in humanities, in religions. Then we also have the kingdom of Aksum, which is today located in present-day Ethiopia and Eritrea. The kingdom flourished as far back as the first century before Jesus Christ was born and up to the seventh century after the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then we have the great West African empires, three very prominent ones. We have the kingdom of Ghana, the kingdom of Mali or Mali Empire, then the Songhai Empire. Not to talk about the empires we have in Yoruba Lound, Bene, Bene Kingdom, Bene Empire, or your empire, and the rest of them, like that. Now the question is, for Africa, how did we get to this paradox? How did we get to this paradox? And I want us to consider, I want us to consider, the first thing is the CMS twins. CMS twins. They are they also refer to as conjoined twins. You can see them. You can see them. Now, what is their fate? What fate do they suffer? Let's check some data. Despite the level of technological advancement, approximately 200 pairs of conjoined twins are said to be born alive every year all over the world. Approximately 200 pairs. And about half of them die before their first birthday. Then the overall survival rate of conjoined twins is between 5 to 25 percent. Just imagine, between 5 to 25 percent. Then about 75 percent of surgical operations results in at least one twin surviving. It means the other one is likely to die. And when you check some of those pictures, you, you find it difficult to believe that they perform operations on these ones and this, some of them actually survive. The second consideration I want us to give is that's the root, I mean that's the tree. When the tree stands where it should be, when it's connected, it lives for as many years as possible. But when it's disconnected, like we see, when the roots are up, or they are off rather, we say that they wither off and they die. Now, you must have come across this. Somebody said when God wanted to create the fish, he spoke to the sea. When he wanted to create the trees, he spoke to the earth. But when God wanted to create man, he spoke to himself. Now, when you take the fish out of the water, what happens? It dies. It dies. And when you take a tree off the ground, it also dies. Ditto for man. When man gets disconnected from his roots, from his ancestry, it dies off too. Now we are presenting Africa as a continent that is disconjoined from its roots. And like Aristotle said, that Greek philosopher, he said, man without society is either a beast or a ghost or a god. And according to him, man cannot live without the society and is solely dependent on the society. Now what are the, agent, the agents of this connection? There are five of them that are, I'm presenting here, but I won't lay hammer on just one of them. Slave trade was an agent of this connection colonialism, capitalism, imperialism that V.I. Lenin referred to as uh, the highest stage of capitalism. And the last one is neocolonialism. Neocolonialism, I always love to refer to that as colonialism by remote control, just like I'm doing now. And it is heralded by globalization via mechanisms such as the multinational corporations and a group of bodies that rule the world today that are known as the corporatocracy. Now, I said, out of the five, I will only pick one of them which has direct connection with our discussion, and that is slave trade. Slave trade. You are welcome to Badagri, the Badagri Heritage Museum. You can see them. Now, I want us to compare the, the images in the picture. That statute and this Human beings, those are our students, 300 level students that were on, um, we took on field trip, was that last year? Last year. 
Now, my question is, this question arises from my inquisitive mind. And the question is, does the generation that that statute represented, do we say they were unfortunate to have been born at the wrong time? And the students or those of us that those students who with that man represent, do we say we are only merely fortunate to have been born at the right time? If they had been born when we were born, they wouldn't have been in change. If we had been born when they were born, they probably would have been in change too. So we have Well, we have some other slides there as we hope that this thing picks up. There are different points there when we get to, for those of us who have been to Badagri, and for those of us who have been to Wida, that's in Benin Republic. I was there 2019 at Wida, the slave port there. Then 2020, we were there at Badagri to see some of these uh, things there. Sorry, I would love, actually love to uh, this thing picks up so that we appreciate the pictures, the picture effect of what we have there. Like I said, in Badagri, for instance, there are five different faces that slaves were made to pass through. From their point where they were bought or sold into slavery to the point to their destination in the Americas or what was referred to as the New World. Five different points, but only because of my time, I only highlight or talk about two of them. And the first of them is what is referred to as the well of attenuation. The well of attenuation. When these slaves were to be taken to the, uh, new, the, to the new world, they passed through a particular well. Like we said, known as the point of attenuation. Yes, we are talking about the five points of on the slavery route. Yeah. Attenuation well. Sorry, just for uh, record. Okay, we have the Mobi family house and the slave Relic museum, that's the first. We have the Berefua Island. We have the spirit attenuation. We have the point of no returns. Then in um, Benin Republic, there is a tree known as the tree of forgetfulness. The tree of forgetfulness. So we look at the attenuation well. That's the well. Whenever those slaves were being taken to the new world, every one of them was made to drink from that well. And the well, what the water there does, it is believed that the water hypnotizes them, does at least two things. One school of thought believes that the water, the water, the effect of the water makes them weak. And so they were unable to resist. They were more in number. But the whites that were they are lost there may just be like 10 or 15 in the ship. But because of the water they had taken, it attenuates them, it weakens them so that they were unable to resist. And that's why they were able to have a smooth sail. The whites were able to have a smooth sail, a sail on the water. The second school of thought believes that water, after drinking it, it makes it wipes, it wipes off their memory. It makes them not to remember anything therefore disconnecting them from their roots psychologically. That's the well of attenuation. Then we have the point of no return. The point of no return. That is, you see the point of no return there? 2020, like I said, we won field trip. These are three lecturers from the Department of History and International Studies, University of Illinois, on the point of no return. It is believed that if you made it to this point, if you made it to this point as a slave, you don't return back to your base, either dead or alive. Now, this is Dr. Joseph Sabueji returning from the point of no return. And like I said, I said, possibly they were unfortunate to have been born at the wrong time. And you and I are fortunate to have been born at the right time. If Dr. Justice had gone, or had been born during their time, and had gone there, he would have gone never to return. If those people had been born this time, if they had gone there, they would have gone and also returned. And so what makes the difference is the timing. 
Then, like I said, in Benin Republic, they also have the tree of forgetfulness. The tree of forgetfulness. That's the tree. The Dahomean kings were believed to be partners in crime with the white the Europeans that purchased the uh, slaves. And so one thing they do in their quest for slaves whose memories will be wiped off was they believed that that tree was mystified. And so what they, did, what they did was they made the men to move around the tree nine times. Ladies will move around the tree seven different times. After which they believe that your memory is wiped off and you suffer permanent amnesia, which is forgetfulness. Now, Walter Rooney provides us with a graphical estimate of the world's population. In millions, according to their continents, which explains the stagnation of Africa. Let's look at it. That is Africa. By 1650, Africa's population was said to be 100 million. While European population was said to be 103 million, and Asian population was said to be 253 million. 100 years after, in 1750, Africa's population was still static. Don't forget, Africa is a land of the people, of, of the black people, where these people claim that we, we are only good in what? In birth, in, 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 making, in making children. So Africa's population remains stagnated, the same 100 million, after 100 years. After another 100 years, in 1850, it remains the same 100 million. And in 1900, it increased slightly to 19, sorry, to 120, while, while the population for the other continents were either increasing arithmetically or geometrically, from 103 to 144 to 274 to 428, Asia, the same thing. Now the question is, why was Africa's population stagnant for the period of those years? Slavery, or slave trade rather, was one of the major things there. And I say, the battle continues. Between who and who? The battle continues between Wataroni, who wrote on how Europe underdeveloped Africa, and Stanley Igwe, who wrote on how Africa underdeveloped Africa. The Europeans tried to disconnect Africans from their roots, but Stanley Igwe believed that Europeans were not the ones that helped to develop, to, to underdevelop Africans, but we ourselves are the ones underdeveloping ourselves. Whether Stanley Igwe will be proved right or not, it lies in your hand. We cannot afford to remain unconnected, and so we have to get reconnected with our roots. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you.